We're getting ready for Neef. I'm sorry, guys. I was in the in a meeting with my CPA here. It's not a return contract. Oh, okay. Tax season. Yes, it is. Kim, how are you? I am well, sir. Thank you. Good, good. Great. And um, who else do we have here? Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> my name is Tina Hunter. I am the director of the Foundation for the Better Business Bureau here in Arkansas. We are thrilled to have uh, our wonderful panel today and excited to bring you this great information. Um, with the Better Business Bureau, we bring folks information about their business. We, we help connect you to trustworthy resources and help consumers and businesses uh, from scams. And our foundation is here because, and we bring these to you for free or most low cost because of all of our sponsors. And we're very thankful for them. Today, I would like to introduce Scott Roberts. He's going to be our moderator today um, from Explore Scientific. We have Kim Williams, who is the 2024 uh, Arkansas Eclipse Project Manager. We have Michael Zeiler from uh, GreatAmericanEclipse.com. He is an Eclipse GIS map expert. And David Eicher, and he is the Editor-in-Chief at Astronomy Magazine. Welcome everyone. And I'm gonna turn it over to Scott. Good morning, everybody. Um, Thanks for uh, uh, attending this particular event. Um, it's uh, it's an honor for us to uh, uh, you know talk to you to help prepare businesses, and I think this might be a first of its kind uh, with the Better Business Bureau, uh, especially for an event like like this. Okay, um, but uh, you're going to see that uh, uh, the, the eclipse will have a huge economic impact on the state of Arkansas, being that the eclipse will be coming right through, uh, right through the state. And, um, uh, you know, uh, the uh, experiences that I've had uh, in, uh, you know, as being a supplier of eclipse products, um, especially for the 2017 eclipse, which at the time was being called uh, by people at NASA, the greatest uh, science event in human history. Well, the 2024 eclipse will will you know definitely top that uh, by a magnitude or more, um, being that the eclipse is going to go through uh, you know starting in Texas and going right up across the uh, eastern states uh, where you have more population, you have greater highway access to the center line. Uh, more infrastructures there and uh, you know it's closer I believe to airports and all the rest of it um, uh, you know I will uh, to, to get kind of set the stage a little bit I will turn this over to uh, Michael Zeiler who's actually done some studies on on this with his uh, uh, his work at Great American Eclipse Michael yeah, uh, thank you, Scott. Um, I'm going to share my screen right now so I can show you a little information. Um, all right, can you all see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. So um, as Scott was saying, uh, the, the 2017 eclipse had a large impact on the nation. Um, it had been 38 years since the prior uh, total solar eclipse in the United States. So, so people had forgotten or, or weren't yet born uh, to see the glory of a total solar eclipse, which is truly the, the most beautiful um, the, the most beautiful sight you will ever see in the sky. 
the 2024 eclipse next year uh, is going to have even more of an impact because for several reasons. One is the, the, the memory that people have of, of from seven years ago, that there's much more of a buzz about total solar eclipse. Um, but another reason is that the path of this eclipse uh, traverses a much more populated part of the nation. In fact, uh, comparing 2017 to 2024, in 2017, there were 12 million people inside the path. And uh, we have evidence that several million people uh, made the trek to go see the e eclipse. In 2024, there's going to be over 31 million people that are inside the path of eclipse. So, uh, so it's going to have um, much more of an impact uh, just based on the eclipse track in 2024. Uh, just a few numbers for you. Um, uh, as I said, over 31 million people inside the path within the state of Arkansas, it's some um, 1.7 million people that live inside the state uh, who will experience the eclipse just by stepping out on their porch and looking up in the sky. So, so that's a wonderful circumstance for Arkansas. And um, the, the two best states for weather prospects in the United States are, of course, Texas, but also Arkansas, I would say. So Arkansas is, is going to get a pretty good share of visitation. Um, this is uh, my website. Um, you can find it uh, by going to greatamericaneclipse.com. And there's a little pull down menu if you go on 2024 total, and that, that'll take you to the Arkansas eclipse. Uh, so um, we have a, a nice map that we produced of Arkansas. Uh, we give a pretty good rundown of all the basic facts about the eclipse in Arkansas. Um, we give some, some you know, basic tips for, for viewing the eclipse, um, where to find information about how to, how to view the eclipse safely, uh, encourage people to uh, come bef well before the eclipse, the, the day before the eclipse, um, and stay after the eclipse, because what happened in 2017 was in many locations, there were massive traffic jams in the aftermath of the eclipse. Uh, so we didn't encourage people to stay afterwards and, and also be, be reasonably self-sufficient. Keep your gas tank full, have food and water with you in, in, in case there are... are you know, if you're in a crowded area, it's it would be just smart. Um, here's a fun little animation that we made of the eclipse. And um, you can see the moon's shadow creeping over Arkansas right here. So we tell you what time the eclipse will reach certain areas, how long it'll last if you're close to the center of the path, uh, over four minutes in Arkansas which is a very good duration because that's nearly twice as long as the 2017 eclipse. And you can see the moon's shadow is, is moving uh, at Mach 2, 1800 miles per hour. Um, but you'll have a solid four minutes or so of the eclipse. Uh, we also give uh, share some information about the weather in, in, in Arkansas, um, you know, moderate weather prospects in Arkansas, better than most of the, the track, not quite as good as Texas, but um, I, I think uh, Arkansas will, will attract a, a good number of people from, uh, from other parts of the state. Um, we give some times um, uh, uh, for, for, for some key locations in Arkansas telling you exactly when the eclipse begins and ends and how long it'll be in, in, cer in certain locations. And the part that I think that uh, this audience may be most interested in is, is what is what will be the economic impact and visitation from the eclipse. So you can see uh, on this chart, um, uh, I, 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 
I, I've had a long career in GIS, which is geographic information systems. And so I'm, I'm expert in uh, analyzing um, uh, demographic data and population statistics and, and um, mapping this all out. And so what you can see here is uh, I developed a model uh, that, that aims to predict how many visitors will come. And, and this model starts with, with two basic assumptions. And, and the assumptions are that um, people will drive the shortest path to totality on average. Of course, some people will move, drive to different locations. Um, but on average, people will drive the shortest path of, to totality. So you can expect visitation from neighboring states such as um, looks like uh, Nebraska, Mississippi, Alabama, um, and, and certainly from other states as well. And uh, I, I give uh, my model... Um, predicts a low estimate of eclipse visitation of 70,000 and a high estimate of 281,000 people coming to the state of Arkansas. Um, now to put those numbers in a little bit of context, I made uh, the same predictions for the 2017 eclipse. Hmm. Um, for example, uh, uh, and, and you can still find these numbers uh, on my website. Um, and I, I looked at several states recently and looked at the visitate the, the actual reported visitation numbers. And um, out of four states, three were uh, pretty much in the middle of my predictions. And one state, uh, the state of Wyoming exceeded my predictions. In fact, an interesting fact about the state of Wyoming is that the population of Wyoming tripled on Eclipse Day. They, they have a population of about, of about half a million people and roughly one million people, according to the state transportation department, uh, came on Eclipse Day. I, I don't expect that for, for most places. Uh, that was a remarkable circumstance. Um, but but eclipse visitation um, is real. The impact is real. And um, your state is wise to start uh, looking at it. Um, I'm going to share um, this website um, because w w when I was doing some research recently, I... Um, this was the most comprehensive post-eclipse summary that I found that estimated um, the impact. Here it says roughly 1.6 million people traveled to South Carolina, which was pretty much smack in the middle of, of my estimate, leaving a $269 million impact. Um, and uh, there's a lot of ways to to analyze and slice and dice um, the impact of the eclipse. And this one website, in a few minutes, I'm going to share it in the, the chat for people who are online in the, in the chat. And perhaps someone can share it uh, uh, in the Facebook comment uh, for the Facebook listeners. Uh, but if you want to look, the, the URL is Total Eclipse Columbia SC for South Carolina. <laughs> Uh, com. Uh, and it, it's very detailed with the impact of hotels, camping, air travel, uh, events, um, eclipse glasses that were supplied. So I think this is a, a great resource to look at to sort of uh, gauge what the potential impact uh, for Arkansas will be. And um, one other thing I, I, I'd like to say too is, is that um, you see that I have a page dedicated to Arkansas. Uh, I'm happy to uh, share um, exchange links with um, things like visitors bureaus or county governments or 
people like that who are putting up Eclipse pages and share them on the bottom of our, our website. So um, if you'd like to reach me, um, you can contact me at michael at greatamericaneclipse.com. And uh, Scott, I'll yep. hand it back to you. Great. Okay. Okay. So uh, let me just um, uh, add some commentary here. This impact, um, this impact uh, will be more than you expect, I think. Uh, a lot of people were quite surprised uh, at how many people showed up. Uh, for instance, I was in Wyoming for the 2017 eclipse. Uh, and the uh, we haven't even talked about what happens to traffic, um, you know, and uh, uh, places where people will go uh, to see the eclipse. Uh, and we really haven't touched on how uh, people prepare for an eclipse. Okay, and what I'll tell you right up front is that most people don't. They don't prepare. Okay, they they see it on the news. Okay, so it's going to be on. This will be on every uh, major uh, uh, news, uh, 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 you know, channel, and um, you know. So uh, you know, we're going to turn this over to to David Iker from Astronomy Magazine. Now, astronomy is probably not probably it is the world's largest leading publication devoted to astronomy, and then we'll have a huge section about the eclipse. Um, uh, but uh, this will be much broader than that. And, and the reason why it will is because the eclipse, even if you're not on the center line, even if you're far away from the center line, people will still go out, they'll still try to experience some sort of partial eclipse, okay? And so this, this affects, uh, a lot of people think, well, if you're not on the center line, then, uh, you know, it, it's not even worth going to look at, or, They'll think the other way. I don't need to go to the center line, which also is a, is a, is a truth. Okay. And I'll just view it from home or for wherever I am in, in the state of Arkansas. What that means for businesses, though, is that if you're selling Eclipse products, you, you're going to, uh, in all likelihood, sell out. Um, and it will be a very rapid kind of thing. But let's, let's talk a little bit about how the media reacts to uh, to an eclipse or a major celestial event like that. David, I'll turn it over to you. Well, it's a big deal uh, for people uh, who are outside the normal world of astronomy. Carl Sagan, an old friend, used to say that, you know, 99% of people are born on, live out their lives on Earth in a sort of a two-dimensional world, kind of like, you know, an ants on a board game and, and never realize where they are in the scheme of things um, right up through their, their demise. Uh, but, you know, there's something about an eclipse that really uh, amazes people, you know, that you can predict the geometry of the solar system, the sun and moon coming together and aligning in this way. And it really blows people's minds. And, and it you know, people cry who've, see, who've never seen a total e eclipse. It's quite emotional for people and, and the sort of darkening of earth and the alignment of celestial bodies and everything, it really gets to people emotionally, which is quite uh, amazing to see. So a lot of people will surge into this who have never seen such an event and will hear about it. And I hope they'll head toward the center line because that's where it's going to be best. Um, but our, much of Arkansas will be in, in great shape to see the eclipse here. There'll be tremendous coverage in, in magazines, television, uh, other forms, you know, newspapers and so on and websites everywhere. Um, and it's going to be a huge deal for, for us, for this community of, of astronomy enthusiasts, which ours kind of represents the biggest group, if you will, our brand in the world of astronomy enthusiasts. But it will drag, as, as uh, Michael was saying, you know, they're going on three times as many people this time will be able to step outside their house and see totality as in 2017. 2017 was an enormous big deal, um, not only for the event itself and the advertising and hundreds of thousands, uh, millions of glasses and other products, 
but getting people to be aware of where they are in the cosmos and uh, turned on by it and excited about uh, going out and looking at you know uh, the planet Saturn and sunspots on the sun and galaxies in a dark sky away from cities after the eclipse. It turned a lot of people on to where they are in the scheme of things and what you can go out and see in the universe. So it's going to be a big, big deal. And I think if you position yourselves to be ready for it here, uh, to take advantage of the incredible spike of popularity that ah. we're far outside the the specialist media and into the mass media, it, it will be a very big deal. Uh, you'll be in good shape to capitalize on, uh, on your interests uh, for this, which will be uh, the biggest eclipse for a long time to come in the United States. Right. Now, now David Eicher is the editor in chief for Astronomy Magazine, and he has uh, he's been involved in uh, in the astronomy media world for a very long time. I think starting out when he was a teenager, uh, he um, he's seen eclipses come and go, but. I don't think any of us in our industry have seen such a uh, tremendous impact in this country. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, Michael Zeiler hinted at how many more people would come into uh, the state of Arkansas. And you might think, well, those numbers don't sound very large. But, you know, how many people do you think will come from Oklahoma, okay? to uh, the state of Arkansas to experience the eclipse. You know, that it pretty much means that every uh, hotel room is going to be booked. Uh, every campground is going to be, uh, you know, booked as well. Um, uh, you're, you're going to, the uh, uh, people that will be uh, selling eclipse products uh, will do extraordinarily well. Um, we sold, um, Explore Scientific sold eclipse classes to, I'm not going to give you the uh, very famous um, uh, convenience store that, that purchased our products, but uh, Eclipse Glasses sell for somewhere in the neighborhood of about uh, $2 or $3 a pair. Uh, the margin, profit margin on them is, is quite good, okay? Uh, and, um, uh, but uh, as you get closer to the Eclipse, uh, there is the opportunity to um, increase some prices and uh, uh, you know, so some some business owners really kind of uh, take huge advantage of that, um, uh, you know, for not only Eclipse products, but uh, places to stay and all the rest of it. So those of us that are Eclipse chasers, OK, we know that this is going to happen. OK, we know that the uh, general uh, population is going to wake up to it, maybe only as soon as the media latches on and starts broadcasting that this big eclipse is coming and people go, oh my God, uh, honey, we got to pack up the kids and drive over to Arkansas uh, to go and see this thing, okay? Um, uh, and so it's going to be, it, it does happen about two weeks in, it just starts, this hysteria gets, gets uh, more and more crazy until uh, the event happens and then... Um, uh, leaving uh, the event too uh, can be a situation because of uh, you know uh, roads would be saturated um, uh, and um, you know people still got to pull over they still got to eat they still got to fill their tanks they still got to they got to do all the things that they do you know and they're buying t-shirts they're buying paraphernalia you know they want other people to know that they experience this incredible you know, paradigm shift kind of thing, uh, this event uh, that goes on. And if you, for all of you that have seen the total eclipse, you know what I'm talking about. Those of you who haven't, if you've only seen a partial eclipse, you have really no idea. And so uh, uh, it is that that is uh, another reason why we're having this particular uh, event. But uh, Kim, uh, why don't you come on and talk about some of the challenges? I know that you're going around to um, uh, different, uh, all kinds of different venues to talk about uh, the eclipse. You, you've been charged with doing that. What are the challenges that you're seeing and, and what do you think are the opportunities? Well, thank you, Scott. I, I have to say that the opportunities, I believe, are, are endless. 
Um, I want to, Tina, if I can share my screen. Uh, let's you certainly see. can. And, and, and Tina, let's, let's also, excuse me, I'm sorry, Kim. Let's mm -hmm. talk about a little bit about um, uh, your, your position and what, what this means for the state of Arkansas. Sure. Well, one of the things that I want to show here, and those who have seen me speak have seen this before, but this, if everybody can see that, is um, our Arkansas highway map. Nearly two thirds of Arkansas is within that path of totality. And what Scott had alluded to is that it becomes not just an event for those within the path of totality. Hotels in Northwest Arkansas, we anticipate will be full. Um, same with Eastern Arkansas and with South Arkansas. Because one of the things that I continue to hear uh, whenever I'm speaking and, and I always ask, um, you know, who has seen the eclipse? And by the way, if anybody needs that map or would like anything, my email is kim.williams at arkansas.gov. I'll share everything that we have with you. But so a lot of people will say, well, yes, I, but I had to drive. I could not get in the path of the 2017 eclipse. So I had to drive four hours one way. Um, the really awesome thing about having our path of totality this wide is that, you know, people can stay in Fayetteville. They can stay in West Memphis and they can still be at the path of totality in one hour. Um, a lot of research that I did when we first started talking about the eclipse back in 2019 within Arkansas tourism was just looking at the economic impacts. And nearly every, of every state within the 12 states that were in the path of the 2017 eclipse had record visitation and they had record economic impact. And for those that have heard me speak, you heard Michael talking about South Carolina. South Carolina is one of my favorite things to talk about. 1.6 million people, you know, for two minutes and 39 seconds. Again, it comes down to we're almost double the width of the path and double the time of pure darkness. Um, one of the challenges is, and, and I told Michael this morning, I spent some time on their website. For those who have seen my presentation, I use several of the maps that Michael and his team put on their webpage and their Facebook page. But just seeing the um, the projected traffic map that Michael was talking about, and that if you're going to drive to the path of totality and you're in Washington state, the quickest way to get to the path is Arkansas. Things like that are absolutely amazing to me. And I have to thank, thank Michael and also David. David, I have to say, we knew that we were onto something when Astronomy Magazine put Arkansas as one of the top 10 places to see the eclipse in 2024. Excellent. And, you know, that was like, okay, we have totally made it. So I know I'm sort of rambling, but we anticipate that this will be one of the biggest events Arkansas has ever seen. You know, we have great festivals and we have great events on a weekly basis in Arkansas, but not in parts of 53 of our 75 counties do one does one event take place at a single time and so you know we wish and those again who have heard me speak we wish that we could tell you exactly how many people are going to show up in the days leading up to April 8th of 2024 um another thing and and I always talk a lot about um lessons learned from 2017. And we know there is a great photograph that I use of downtown Casper, Wyoming on August 16th. And there's just people everywhere. Well, the eclipse did not take place until August 21st. So we hope, we expect that people will start coming in on the Wednesday, the Thursday, definitely the Friday, definitely the Saturday before the eclipse on Monday. Um, we are doing, as many states are doing, using sort of the mantra of uh, come early, stay late, stay put. 
And I see the a message, I believe it was from Paul, asking about how the state is going to deal with the traffic. Here's the thing. For those uh, who may not know, Interstate 40 and Interstate 30 are both within that path of totality. Now, if you drive either of those routes regularly, you know that there can be traffic on a normal day when nothing is going on. Um, we began having state agency meetings about a year and a half ago. And Arkansas Department of Transportation was with us on every meeting. So they know that it is coming. I do believe that they are working with the Federal Highway Administration because the Federal Highway Administration is not only, you know, they're dealing with what, 12 states that are within this path and and with the traffic. So we, here's the thing, and, and I hope that any of the gentlemen will, that know more about this than I do. Here's the thing, and, and Brooke Kaufman, who we worked with, who was at the CEO of Visit Casper in 2017, she told me, she said, Kim, here's the thing. You could do nothing and people are going to come. You can plan and plan and plan. There are still going to be issues. You know, I would pretty much bet anything that I have that immediately following the eclipse, there will be traffic on Interstates 30 and Interstate 40. There's no way around it. You know, when you put that influx of people into an area that's not normally there, we're going to have traffic. So, I also think that because of 2017, our eclipse chasers, if you will, they know to expect this. You know, they lived it in 2017. So, you know, we could, as I say often, we could do nothing but work on the eclipse from now until April 7th of 2024. And we're still going to have issues like traffic. But there's really nothing that we can do about that except accept it that it's it's going to happen but yes um arkansas department of transportation is aware as of course all of uh, our other state agencies and we've been working with many of them but again the challenges in my opinion do not by any means outweigh getting these visitors into our states or into our states and state and our communities you know, I've always said that if I can get somebody to Arkansas, I'm pretty much guaranteed that they'll come back because they're amazed by the beauty of it. So I'm really looking forward to having those visitors that may not have ever been to Arkansas and seeing what a gorgeous state we have. And then they're going to say, as happened in Wyoming, Brooke Kaufman, who we had been working with over the last couple of years, she told me, she said, we have people every year come in and say, hey, I had not been to Casper until the eclipse. And now we come back every four months or every six months or once a year. You know, from a tourism standpoint, from a hospitality standpoint, that is something that's that's very, very exciting um, about this event. Um, I did say see someone had put in about schools closing. Here, here is the thing. Arkansas Department of Education was also has been in, in our meetings, I know that they realize that that is something that they have to address. Believe me, uh, that is well below my pay grade or well above my pay grade. I do know that if, and I did put the, in the chat, the interactive Google map that I've shared with so many people, but that is in there. You know, one of the things that we need to remember, we talk about the, the full darkness. We talk about, you know, the four minutes and 18 seconds. We talk about the three minutes and 26 seconds, whatever it is when you're in the path of totality. But it's so much more than that, because basically this event is going to go on for two and a half hours. It finishes in most places in Arkansas about 3.10 p.m. So what's going on on a Monday in April at 3 10 p.m kids are loading up buses and they're trying to get from school so i can tell you that i know that that was a discussion um that the arkansas department of education was having i do know that since i began this of course we have a new governor we have a new administration i know that it is definitely on their radar and i think a lot of i i have to say april 8th of this year and, and if you've heard me talk or we've discussed this personally before, 
that's sort of a kickoff day for us. You know, I imagine that a lot of hotels over the weekend, resorts, campgrounds saw a lot of increase in phone calls saying, hey, I want to get a room. I want to get a campground, a campsite. I want to do that. So I think in this next week or so, we're really going to get a pretty good idea of how our lodging um, partners are going to be impacted. And I do think that, you know, there's just a lot. We have now, what, 363 days? Um, and I, I'm looking forward to every one of them because I truly believe that this will be something that Arkansas has not seen and may not see again until 2045. Right. Okay. Kim, thank you very much. Um, now, also, uh, I think what's important with uh, uh, Arkansas businesses is the impact of people rushing into, you know, if you're, if you're participating as a business in this eclipse, you're going to also have to manage uh, situations where uh, things you might oversell, uh, you might uh, uh, have to turn away people, at, uh, you know, who are coming in at the last second to uh, either rent a room or to, you know, or to get food or whatever. Okay. Uh, maybe some gas stations even run out of fuel. I don't know. Okay. It is, um, uh, but it, it, there is a situation where you might get complaints, uh, directed at you because you were not able to completely fulfill what they wanted. Okay. <laughs> As after they drove, whatever from, you know, wherever in Oklahoma or Missouri or wherever they're coming from, okay, to uh, come to the center line. And, um, uh, you know, we, we experienced this ourselves. We ran into a situation where uh, we could not supply enough Eclipse glasses and we sold millions of them, okay? Uh, so uh, there is, um, uh, uh, there's a delicate uh, situation uh, of where, you know, you have to tactfully uh, tell the person, look, there's, uh, sorry, we, we can't fulfill this. There might be other places you can go, but you might get uh, a complaint lodged against you with a, with a better business bureau. And I can't recommend more than uh, you as a business to work as closely as you can with the Better Business Bureau in this regard because uh, they're great at uh, helping you manage these kinds of things they were wonderful to us and uh, you know so it was uh you know there's there are people that uh can become unreasonable you know uh in these kinds of scenarios but it is it is going to be an amazing event for so many and um so uh what in that regard uh, tina what what do you think uh, is the best thing to do uh, for a Arkansas business if they're if they're trying to put their best foot forward even before this eclipse happens? I think that um, making sure that you've got all of your ducks in a row uh, can be really important, and that can include um, the pre-planning ahead of time, making sure that you've got um, enough enough items, you know. As, you know, as much as you can, but also getting getting involved with the Better Business Bureau and your local chambers can be very important as a support system. Um, with the Better Business Bureau, we can help you ahead of time kind of walk through some of the possible complaints and kind of that process and what that looks like. And we can help drive customers, you know, to your business and to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, through accreditation with the Better Business Bureau. Um, but also, you know, there's going to be a lot of scammers out. Um, no, we haven't touched time. on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I'm sure that you can probably think about, you know, the last eclipse, Scott, and kind of what was happening around that. So do you yes. want to share some <laughs> Your, yeah, your yeah, yeah. So I, I'm going to actually I'm going to uh, touch bases also with Michael Zeiler and, and David Eicher about this. Uh, during the 2017 eclipse, uh, there was a scenario where um, there were manufacturers, let's put that in quotation marks, manufacturers who sold eclipse glasses that were not safe. 
okay? They were uh, nothing better than maybe sunglasses, okay? And while looking, all of us have looked at the sun, you can go outside right now and look at the sun and it's not going to blind you, but it is gonna make you turn away, okay? During a, a, a total eclipse, you might look at the sun a little bit longer than you might otherwise. And this is where the danger lies, okay? You wouldn't have, you might kind of try to overcome that natural reaction to look away, okay? Um, and so uh, this was a big uproar. Uh, uh, I don't know how many fake eclipse glasses entered into the U.S. market, but uh, Amazon during this time in 2017 did an instant one day refund of $60 million in eclipse glasses, okay? And uh, left everybody scrambling to go find safe eclipse glasses. So when you're looking at eclipse products, you wanna make sure that they are, that they have, they meet all the ISO safety standards. Uh, you know, you want to, you wanna do it right. And uh, so authorities like, um, uh, Astronomy Magazine can certainly, uh, you know, give you information about what is a, a safe eclipse product, how to safely observe an eclipse. Michael Zeiler in Great American Eclipse is going to have probably the very, very best uh, publications about uh, where to be and, and uh, you know, what to expect from this experience, you know, so I'm going to recommend, that's why they're here, okay, you've got, you've got the, the best of the best here to uh, to kind of guide you through this. Um, Explore Scientific, uh, we do sell Eclipse products. I'm not going to make a giant pitch here for us, but I will tell you that we uh, go through multiple testing uh, 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 programs to make sure that we're selling uh, the right thing, including, you know, we sell our products to mass market. So not only do we have to do ISO safety testing, but we have to do toy safety standards. And so that is that is a, uh, another layer on top of that. And one of the other things that we have done is we have put, um, uh, like some money has, uh, uh, you know, things within it so that you can't just counterfeit it, okay? Uh, or it's very difficult to counterfeit it. We've done that this time with Eclipse glasses. So um, I'll get off my soapbox about that, but let's, Let's talk, um, let's ask um, Michael Zeiler uh, about, um, you know, what products, if you're going to get products, what, what products from Great American Eclipse you should get, okay? Uh, um, and, uh, and then we'll come back also to um, uh, David Eicher at Astronomy Magazine to talk about how uh, being involved with that magazine and getting involved in the greater community of astronomers, because we have a big community of, of amateur astronomers also in, in Arkansas. This is the natural state, and we do have great dark skies here in this in this state. So, uh, Michael, you're up next. Well, thanks, Scott. Um, I, the, you know, the, the least expensive way to safely view an eclipse is, is to acquire some Eclipse glasses, which are cardboard glasses, you've all seen them. Um, and yes, we, we we certainly have them on our website. There you go, Kim. Um, uh, they're, they're very affordably priced. Um, and if if you want um, a little more of an upscale experience, um, we have these plastic wraparound glasses that look like sunglasses except they've got the solar filters in the middle um, those are about twenty dollars each and then you can go even further and uh, we we offer some um, solar binoculars which are um, which are actually um, you know relatively inexpensive uh, binoculars plastic binoculars but they've got the solar filters built into them so they're absolutely safe. You, you can't go wrong with that because there's no no filters to accidentally uh, take off. Um, so so um, and and then also you know of of course we offer uh, a wide variety of products and uh, Dave's magazine astronomy.com has has a good variety of, of products too. But the, the the important thing I would emphasize is. Um, 
you know, Scott was was alluding to, to the problems in 2017 with with fraud and and so forth. And um, I, I would encourage people that if they have any questions about a vendor or, or they want to find a reputable source, um, go to the website eclipse.aas.org. Right. That's the American Astronomical Society. They're the authority um, and they do a lot of vetting of, of uh, suppliers and vendors and, and they participate in the ISO certification. So if you have any questions, I would go to that source, you know, as the authoritative source. They also have an excellent page uh, and, and I listed in, in the chat um, with, with tips for um, eye safety. So. I would recommend that it's there, there's some, some some simple and basic rules to follow to view an eclipse safely, uh, and and they they do a good job of summarizing it and and they're they're approved by all of the the major uh, scientific bodies like the the Association of Ophthalmologists and NASA and and so forth. So they're, they're the authority, and and I would refer to them. Great. There's a comment here from Kevin. Uh, well, well, one more thing I, I'd like to say too, and, and that is that we have a lot of resources on our, our webpage, maps and information. And, and I, I, I would just like to state openly that uh, people can freely use content from our website. If, if you're putting up a website, um, you're free to use um, 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 the, the digital map from our website and, and share that. Um, We'd appreciate a link back, but but you're you're free to use that content. Great, thank you. There's a question here or a comment from Kara Carlin, uh, saying we expect to see an uptick in travel scams too uh, in the months leading up to the eclipse. Um, you know, and so uh, you know the Better Business Bureau will certainly uh, be a great resource for that kind of thing as well. Um, and, and again, I want to give kudos to the Arkansas BBB because uh, I believe that we're the only ones in the nation actually, uh, you know, the only BBB in the nation that's actually paying attention to this in this way. Okay, so, um, you know, good job, Tina. That it's, it's awesome to be able to do this and an honor. David, uh, what are your thoughts on, uh, you know, uh, the, you know, the counterfeiting that went on the eclipse scams you know um and uh, uh where you know i know astronomy magazine is probably the best resource for um you know safely viewing the eclipse what, what is what does astronomy have to offer um and and where can they get this information for astronomy enthusiasts the eclipse coming up a year from now has been a big deal for a while now already for the people who are into this uh, field this hobby this activity so we've run some stories about this already we will be running a a both in our print magazine which old timers like me still get and, and on our website and and on social media we'll be running more and more stories uh, as the eclipse approaches, of course, and this is true for the annular in the fall as well. Some of them written by distinguished folks like Michael Zeiler and his uh, uh, sometimes co-author, Michael Bakic, one of our uh, former editors. So there'll be a lot of information also on astronomy.com and in our magazine, Astronomy Magazine. Um, and, you know, I think we shouldn't, uh, really undervalue in any way the danger here for novices. It's safe to look at the sun directly without filters during totality when you can see the sun's corona, the, the atmosphere of the sun. Aside from that, the partial phases leading up to just that at four minute or whatever it is, period of totality, you need to have a good filter. Now, whether that be holding up a filter for your naked eyes, so to speak, or uh, filters on the front of binoculars uh, or a telescope looking at uh, the eclipse in the partial phases in that way, 
or you have to be very, very careful, of course, projecting an image of the sun, as a lot of people will do through a pinhole onto a piece of paper to watch the partial phases. So the major thing that you can do, I do also uh, really recommend the AAS website that was uh, mentioned already, greatamericaneclipse.com, astronomy.com, and explorescientific.com. All of those sites, I think, will have good observing information and safety information about how to really safely view the eclipse. It's not a joke, you know, even if you, you know, quickly glance at the sun, even if it doesn't seem bright or something, you know, uh, using a filter that is not, you know, absolutely the top uh, of the line, uh, co the proper coated mylar or glass filter of the right type. It's very, very dangerous potentially. And, and you know, there are other wavelengths of light than what we're used to, visible light, you know. So ultraviolet light, for example, from the sun can be very damaging in a very short term to your eyes. And we don't want to have anyone enjoy their first uh, eclipse and then have to uh, call them by their new nickname afterward, Blinky. You know, so you do need to be very, very careful and, and take caution seriously. So I would recommend that it's it's really worth broadcasting in a big way, getting your eclipse glasses, your filters for your telescope, which need to go on the front of binoculars or a telescope very securely uh, fastened, of course, not on the eyepiece end with the optics magnifying the energy. Um, go go to the right sources, the, the AAS, uh, Great American Eclipse, astronomy.com, Explore Scientific. Those are all very, very reliable sources uh, that will not lead you into somebody trying to make an extra buck by selling you cheap filters that are not properly made or that have pinholes in them or anything like that. So that that's really dangerous. It really, truly is. And uh, that we we it's hard for us to make uh, too much of a big deal about safety with an event like this because millions of people are going to look at this who have never looked at the sun in this way before. Right, that's right. It's it is uh, uh, there's you know as as Dave Iker and um, Michael Zeiler and Kim have all alluded to there's incredible opportunities here. You know, uh, you will have. Uh, you know, as Kim even pointed out, if you do nothing, you do nothing special for the eclipse, you're probably going to see an increase in business. OK, if you do something for the eclipse, uh, then uh, you will get more than than your share, I would expect. OK, um, there are um, there are opportunities for you to do events. Uh, you can invite your uh, clientele to a special eclipse viewing, you know, if you have that kind of, uh, you know, if you're uh, running a hotel or whatever, uh, what, what better than to be, you know, have a hotel on the center line or, you know, uh, to observe the eclipse, uh, you know, you can have uh, eclipse glasses ready for them, who knows, maybe have special eclipse drinks, uh, food, what, whatever. Um, so th these are all things that uh, uh, you can participate in and celebrate. Um, you will want to uh, also advise your clientele about, uh, you know, safety measures during the eclipse, but before and after, uh, you know, traveling to uh, your site um, and then leaving your site. You, people should not leave right away. Uh, uh, during the 2017 eclipse, uh, we were also on the center line, and the best recommendation was that you stay put a full day after the eclipse has already happened. A lot of people just tried to leave. Okay, the eclipse is done, let's go, all right? Uh, that traffic jam from Casper, Wyoming to, uh, uh, to uh, Boulder, Colorado, was uh, it took an entire day for people to traverse this. Uh, people also ran out of fuel uh, from being stationary. Uh, so these, I had never seen such a traffic jam, uh, you know, for an, uh, an event like that in my, in my life. Um, Kim, uh, what more would you wanna add about, uh, uh, you know, getting, 
people aware, especially kids, you know, uh, and in the schools. I, you know, we, we talked about maybe some of the schools might be closed or all of them might be closed. Uh, there was a situation during the eclipse where uh, there was fear that, uh, oh, well, one was that the, there were a lot of um, counterfeit eclipse glasses out there. Uh, second was is that there were lots of schools that had eclipse glasses in their schools, donated to them, or they even purchased them, and then the kids didn't even get a chance to use them, okay? Now, you might not think that's a big deal, but a total eclipse is such a big deal, and it really does change people's lives that, uh, you know, kind of keeping someone away from an experience like that might diminish their interest in some of the technology, uh, uh, you know, aspects of their education or science aspects of their education. And, uh, you know, we have big challenges in this world and who's gonna lead that? It's not gonna be the older generation. You know, we've done our deal, okay? It is gonna come from youth. So, uh, Kim, what do you, th what do you think is a, uh, that Arkansas will be doing uh, uh, or what do you hope that Arkansas does uh, for youth as the eclipse comes near? You know, you talk about it again. I, I will say that I have not yet seen a full solar eclipse, but I thought I had because I'm going to tell my age here. But in 1979, I was a elementary school student and I remember going outside and, you know, our teachers were all over us and we had that box and we had that pinhole and and I honestly thought, because it has stayed with me all of these years, that I had seen a full solar eclipse. Hmm. I hadn't, but it was still so amazing. And I know that in 2017, um, because most of Arkansas had the partial eclipse, that a lot of schools did not allow the kids to go outside. I was outside at our nearby Arkansas State Park, and it was just amazing. So I hope. And I do believe that the Arkansas Department of Education will work with schools, will work with parents and say, this is a big deal. We need to let these kids get outside and, and see this event. And mm -hmm. I think even, I believe that even if schools are closed, I think a lot of our schools would still have events. So kids could come in and they, you know, wouldn't be playing some game or, you know, and, and have, um, special events and things like that. One of the things too, we have worked with, um, and I'm not sure if you've met them, Scott, but the Central Arkansas Astronomical Society. Mm -hmm. When I need the sciencey stuff, because you gentlemen here, y'all do the science. No, no, Kim does the tourism and 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 that. I'm not that science person. But the Central Arkansas Astronomical Society has worked with us and is going out to schools and, and working with people because they want, you know, our next generation to realize what a big deal this is and, and to see it. So I hope everybody and not just the schools, let's say they that schools are closed. You know, if you have children, if you have grandchildren, make sure to plan for this and give them the opportunity because I promise you it's something that they'll remember. If I still remember going outside with a box and a pinhole in 1979, right. you know, when you actually see the real deal, that is going to be an impact on, um, on a child and also on adults. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I also, one thing that I do want to say, and, and I, I say this jokingly, when I make presentations to communities and organizations, tourism as a whole, you know, we sort of compete against each other, even within the state. You know, if Little Rock is having a festival one weekend and Bentonville is having a week, you know, a festival that weekend too, we sort of compete. There is no competition in this event. Um, I am suggesting that communities and organizations and even businesses work with others. You know, if you're doing an event one night, you know, don't, if you live, I'm going to use my friend Susan West in Russellville. You know, Russellville doesn't have to do an event every night. Work with Moralton, work with nearby communities, work together to give that experience, an overall experience for our visitors coming in. So it's a great time to build partnerships for sure. 
That's right. Yeah, and you'll find out that the Eclipse uh, community is like that. There's it will be impossible to sell for for any of us to sell enough eclipse glasses or to offer enough uh, of anything uh, to fulfill this because there's it's going to be so much all of a sudden and so you know we hope that you're all part of it. Uh, uh, Tina, I want to thank you very much for allowing us to be uh, to put this program together, and I want to thank. Uh, uh, Michael Zeiler and Kim Williams and David Eicher for being on here today. Uh, if there's any other questions from the audience, maybe we have a couple of minutes to answer uh, any of your questions. But, um, uh, you know, I think that that's kind of a wrap. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Scott. Uh, we will be sending out a recording of this today in a list of all the resources. And we do truly appreciate everyone's time today and for Scott coordinating every, you know, all of our panelists. So thank you, Michael. Thank you, Kim. And thank you, David. Um, we hope that we can connect you to trustworthy resources to help you grow your business and prepare for the eclipse. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks.